it was when he was being interviewed by Roland Butter. Yeah. And he was asking him questions and it put him on the spot. And he would, it was the way you portrayed him panicking, trying to think of an answer. <laughs> Hello, I'm Roland Butter from the Scrotton Gazette. I've heard rumours that a spaceman landed in this field. Jeff, taken by surprise, tried to dismiss the claim. No, no. I've not seen any spacemen here. Oh, no. No, you must be mistaken, he spluttered. Well, where have all your cabbages gone? You can't have sold them because of the cabbage blight going round, said Roland. Well, no, um, yes, no, um, oh, 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 well, oh, oh, yes, they've gone for cattle feed, said Jeff very unconvincingly. I didn't know cattle eat cabbages, said the young reporter. Oh, yes, well, these are special cabbage-eating vegetarian cows, blurted Jeff. Veggie cows, exclaimed the young reporter. Oh, yes, these are Argentinian long hair, short horn mountain cows. They only eat cabbages. How are you, Glenn? Oh, very well, very well. And things going good in Lincolnshire? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, still busy. Yeah. Yes. If I'm not working on one daughter's house and working on the other, then I'm helping a neighbour out over the back on a job he's got. So, yeah, no preach for the wicked. No, I'm... how do you find the time to write? <laughs> well, with difficulty. I, I've, I've started writing the third Santa book, but... Yes. It's, it's not got very far yet, but... Yeah, we shall, we shall have to knuckle down. Well, we're in the middle of working... Well, you finished the second one and we're in the middle of turning that into an audio book, but the one we did as an audio book, which has been out now for a couple of weeks, is Fartman. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you'd be forgiven for thinking perhaps it's, it doesn't have highbrow appeal with a title like that. However... Some of it is quite clever. Where did the idea come from? Because uh, let's just make it clear. This is almost, well, this is science fiction. It's science oh, yeah. fiction comedy with a message as well. So tell <laughs> us about Fartman. Where did the idea come from for him? Well, you, uh, the, char the character was actually uh, a character from another, another business we, we sort of folded up a few years back. Um, but we'd still got we still got this this character at the back of my mind, and it was such. Wait a, a minute! Wait a minute! You had a business featuring somebody called Fartman. Oh no! He he started off as Patman. He as was Pat, uh, Pat, Patman. P A P. Patman. Okay. Um, oh, P E P. Petman. No, Pap. P A P. P -A -P. Right. So P A P. Patman, and what was Patman? Uh, he was the figurehead for Preventer Puncher Man. Right. But, um, yeah. Well, that, well, that, and that was a legit business? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and he was like the Michelin Man kind of a, a, a yeah, character. Yeah. Right, he, okay. He, he was he was the logo for the business, the advertising. Uh, again, Rob, Rob, Rob came up with it. Um, that's your brother? Yeah. Right, the he, bloke who does the artwork? That's right. Right, okay. Um in fact, I've still got the original um, advertising board. It's up in the roof of the garage. Right. Uh, I wave to him every now and again. <laughs> um, yeah, it was um, yeah, a bit of a failed business venture, but nothing nothing ventured, nothing going. Got to try these things, yeah. 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 Okay, no. so you had you had Pat Man, who fixed punches. Yeah. How did he become Fart Man? Because there's a connection there. There's um, there's a release of pressure, isn't there? I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I never thought of it like that. <laughs> uh, he was, he was, he was, he was just such a brilliant comic character. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, well, I, I, I can't remember after one of the books. You know, you sit and think, well, what, you know, what, can, what can I write about next? And he, and he came to mind, and I thought, oh, I could I could try a uh, uh, a superhero. Yeah. And then you'd get all these ideas going round your head, and you think, 
most of them are being done some brilliant some not so brilliant and i thought i don't i don't want to jump on the bandwagon and people go oh you know just another superheroes in hollywood right now are worth money there's you know <laughs> this is the perfect time to introduce a, a, a superhero to the franchise glenn well, well he is a superhero in a way isn't he yeah yeah he is. of course he is he's got superpowers <laughs> Yeah, so um, um, I can't think how it how it came about now, but but Fart, Fartman came to fruition, and there he is in all his glory. Okay, now I don't want to give too much away, but Fartman is an intergalactic traveller who lands in England and causes quite the fuss. Um, and the bloke that has to deal with it, who is the the bloke in charge of the local police, he doesn't really like a lot of fuss. <laughs> so he's trying to keep everything on the down low. Meanwhile, there's a spaceship in a farmer's field. Like I said, I don't want to give too much away, but I heard from you when we were doing it that the policeman is actually based on somebody you used to know. Yes, he was... Um, yeah, he was, a, he, was a, he was a real character. I mean, it's not... It's, this is not a true... Um, uh, depiction of 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 the real Charlie, but yeah, because it, any co any uh, similarity between for people like alive and is purely a uh, coincidence. Yeah, it's a fictitious <laughs> account. Yeah, yeah, he gave he gave he gave, he gave me the inspiration and uh, yeah. a lot a lot of the a lot of the character traits that uh, right, yeah. Um, yeah and, yeah, and you knew him when you were. Can you say this, or is this this? Are we, are we getting too close to the truth now? When you were involved <laughs> in law enforcement? Uh, yes, yeah, many, yeah, many years ago, he he was actually my section sergeant. Right, lovely, okay, lovely bloke, lovely bloke. Right, so you decided to put him in Toll Piddle Police Station, and he's the one that gets the call, saying yeah. there's a spaceship in this farmer's field. Now. I love this book. I mean, I love your work anyway because I like reading it because it's fun and the books are funny. Is this a kids' book? I was, I was, I was debating that with myself this afternoon because there's there's one or two of the books um, that grumped for, for uh, yeah about uh, the grumpy lollipop man yeah yeah. Um, I said, well, I don't know to be honest because we, the the people people have read them. Uh, it, it seems to be, I seems to be covering a a, a multi generational time scale. That I've, I've got friends who are anything from ten to sixty eight, and they they all have a chuckle. They all they all say how much they've enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, in fact, Grump, Grumps is in the States at the minute. Now, what do they make of it there? Because your books are very British to me. But then again, so were the Beatles. You well, know what I mean? So was Benny Hill, you know, <laughs> and they went down well in the States, didn't they? So well, how, Phil, how are they dealing with it there? Well, I, 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 I sent all the books to a friend of mine, Phil, who's in Glasgow at the minute. <clears throat> he, he had... He had a, he had him in his stroke, so he's he's on he's on he's recovering. So I sent him all the books just as a just to try and cheer him up, and uh, he loved them. And his carers, he said, one of his carers said she was crying, laughing at Santa. At Santa, uh, what the first one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, but one one of his other carers, she she's, I think she's American. She was going home to see her parents in the states and uh he let it she wanted to take all of them <laughs> but he wouldn't let her he, he let her take grumps and i had a message from him the other day saying oh you're a big hit in the states and it's off to i can't remember what it is now it's it's on my phone it's, it's some african country now so i don't know i've got to ring him i don't know how the hell it's going there but yeah, apparently. Well, the books are available worldwide through Amazon and the Audible versions through Audible, so there's no reason why. I mean, this is a, this is a promotional tour that these are doing. <laughs> By the sound of things, 
as long as people know how to download them, they'll have no yeah. problem oh, yeah. getting all of them if they can get online. Yeah. Wow. Well. Wow. All right. Well, back to Fart Man for a minute. Where did the the other characters come from? Can you tell us? Um. Ooh. Um. That, well, all, all out here, or fortunate. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um. Well, you're you're one of the characters. Yes, uh, I know. Which one am I again? <laughs> I, I've got my own name in it. I mean, I'm called Graham, <laughs> aren't I? I'm one of yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, but the yeah the the actual the actual characters are all they're all worryingly out the head, right? Um, yeah, and they're based on people that some of them are based on people you might know. There's one of them um, is like Pike from Dad's Army, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, the uh, yeah I did. <sighs> I just nick some of the ideas and people you think, oh, you know, he, 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 his type of character would fit well into the story doing this. Yeah. So that's where, that's where some come from. And you sort of gen, generalize the, the, the idea of the person without, without nicking the idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'll use them as an inspiration. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, one of them has, I think, of all the audiobooks I've done, and I've done over 200 audiobooks now, one of them has the best character name of all the thousands of characters I've done in 200 audiobooks. No one has a better character name than this. I am, of course, talking about Roland Butter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How did you get a name like Roland Butter? How did you do that? Well, that, 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 again, this is... It's just stuff you drag up out of here from like 40, 50 years ago. <laughs> when I did my um, uh, police basic training at Sandgate, yeah, um, he was a, he was a character one of the training sergeants used on one of the exercises because they, 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 they'll they'll go out and they'll they'll set up a scene where I can't think what it was now. Um, might have been a road traffic accident or or, or some kind of um, domestic dispute, and this would have been one of the characters that that, that we we as the class had to deal because the, there'd be probably eight people, eight people looking on, and two people in the class would be designated the attending officers to deal with it, and and roll and butter. Roland Butter was one of the characters portrayed, <laughs> and it's it's just things like this that that, that go in here, yeah, uh, and you sort of drag them out forty years later. Oh, it's, brilliant! Uh, yeah, yeah, it made, it made me smile at the time, but yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, it is good. So, how have you been finding the process of turning your work into an audio book then? Uh, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, um the more the more i get to work with you it, it's um i'm getting to know your way of approaching things <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah i i i uh, I, I love the uh the way you portrayed um oh blimey um i'm two books in front of you now um, of course you are yeah um who was the farmer God blow his brain's gone dead. Oh yeah, you said to me you wanted him a bit like Frankie Howard. Frankie Howard meets I can't remember the other you had two two comedians or, or two comic actors that you mentioned. Yeah. One of them was Frankie Howard. And so was he it? was doing like uh, there's a spaceship in my you know oh it's like it was there was a bit of Frankie Howard in there for me. You know, it wasn't quite, oh, shut your face. It wasn't quite that, but it was, it had a bit of him to it, yeah. Oh. Of him panicking. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was when he was being interviewed by Roland Butter. Yeah. And he was asking him questions and it put him on the spot. And he was, it was the way you portrayed him panicking, trying to think of an answer. <laughs> I wonder what that bit was. 
Which one? Was, here's a list of the here's a list of the characters, and these are in alphabetical order. There was Abby, Billy, Bravo One, Charlie Sergeant Charlie Randall, the Council Workman, Dave. Was it Dave? No, Frank, uh, Jeff, Jeff, George, Jeff, yeah. Jeff the Farmer. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know the bit you mean. I know the bit you mean. Yeah. And then there was the the sidekick to Fartman, because it, like all superheroes, so Fartman as well, he's a lot like, and I think you mentioned this as well, he's a lot like Buzz Lightyear, isn't he? Yeah. He's slightly deluded. He thinks he's flying the spaceship. And although you don't say it in the book, it does appear like that maybe, um, is it Nick Nick? Is that the, the offsider? Nick, Nick, yeah. Yeah. It seems that to me that Nick Nick is actually flying it, and Fartman thinks he's flying it. Oh, Nick Nick Nick's the brains behind everything, and uh, yeah, uh, Fart, Fartman's just deluding himself into thinking he's more important. Yes, yeah. Well, so they've gone off. You can't say they've gone off into infinity and beyond because that's already taken. <laughs> but uh, uh, it does. The book does have a, a happy ending. Everything tucks in at the end, as all your books tend to do, which is always nice. There's a definite beginning, a middle, and an end. So, what's next for Fartman? Will there be more of his adventures, like there is for Santa? Well, I would, yeah, I would like. I, 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 I deliberately wrote it to the point where. It's very open-ended, so at some point in the future he could turn up again. Yes. Um, you know, and I, what I, about you, Glenn? What are you working? So you said we're working on at the moment. We're putting, we're doing the other Santa book, the second in the series. Yeah. Um, which takes place at the North Pole this time, doesn't it? It doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah. It was his first one was disastrous delivery. Um, this this next one is a, is a case of Santa rides again, but he, he's he's on his way back from a delivery. Is he on his way back from the delivery in the first book? Is he? Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Okay, so there's plenty of scope for him to to go on to other things, and uh, yeah, that, it looks that, like there is a fart man too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've I've let I, I deliberately left it open, so he he could he could at some point return. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And what about for other books for you? You said you, you're two books ahead, so I'm guessing one of them is Santa, but maybe because that one's already written. There's another, what, what are you working on? Well, it's a, it's a third book in the Santa trilogy. Yeah. Oh, is it great? Uh, Santa Rides Again, there's a title for you. <laughs> I don't know. It's up to you. Um, you know it if you won't. It's a it's a slight departure from uh, from the traditional. I don't I don't I don't want to say too much at this okay. stage. Okay. Yeah. Till it's out. Get it get it out there first. Yeah. Maybe somebody nicks me idea. Yeah, that's a good uh, something. Definitely something to to worry about. Well, it is great. It's the fourth book we've done together. Is that right? We did Santa, Grumps, Trevor. This is Trevor the Tractor. Uh, yeah, this is the f fourth one. We've done. There's a fifth one in production, and you're writing more. It's uh, it's always good to talk to you, Glenn, and I'm I'm glad you are finding time to do the writing, even though you. Geez, it seems like you. I bet you haven't been so busy since you retired. <laughs> <laughs> I could do with going back to work, have a rest. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Glenn. Good to okay. talk to you again. Continued right. success. Bye.